been asked to comment on the following statement. Especially the human inborn power of visualization and imagination is a way how humans communicate with the astral world every day. Um, I would concur with that, but I would say it is not only humans who do that in such a fashion. Because also animals have imaginations and in their own way, you could say, visualizations. And this is how they communicate with each other and also with us in a telepathic fashion. Um, we can actively imagine or visualize things. Um, but most of the time we do this passively. We have emotions and thoughts all the time. And our thoughts and our emotions are visible from the astral perspective. The big difference is that usually thoughts and imaginations are quite fleeting. We tend not to think of one specific thing for more than five minutes or so. And because of that, it's in a way already, it starts to form and before it has yeah, become something very concrete enough to draw attention from the astral world, it is already starting to evaporate or to change. So the ability to have a very stable imagination and a very stable visualization, to concentrate and not to be distracted, is what makes it really possible to have a more open communication with the astral world. But in the astral world there are many different spirits, ancestral spirits, there are manifestations of higher beings there, um, our own guides can be contacted this way. Also other humans can be contacted this way. But unless there is enough uh, power, you could say, and harmony to the visualization, it will tend to evaporate. The best way actually to practice this art is through dreaming. If we start to work with conscious dreaming, uh, trying to take control of our dream, trying to be conscious of that we are dreaming, um, then our consciousness becomes more and more able to yeah, go into the dream body, to make that part of its consciousness. And that will in turn also make it more easy, if we are visualizing, to use that visualization or that imagination to create a dialogue between us and astral power usually happens through a change. We imagine one thing and if another power wants to communicate something it will start to change the image. Uh, for instance I might imagine a meadow and if uh, for instance the spirit of a rabbit wants to communicate with me I will see a rabbit hole in that meadow or even a rabbit in that meadow. So it will create an image within the imagery I have created. So it is very necessary that while we are creating a very stable image, that also the image is not yeah, too hermetically sealed, it is open for other influences, so they can co-create with us and they can share the space with us. But for that it also is also necessary for our imagination and visualization to be of a high enough vibration we are in a very low vibration ourselves because we're angry or upset or worried, then when we go into the astral, when we imagine and project things, we have our own little box in which we are sealed. And within this box we are creating images and we are working on our problems. Because basically if we're in a very bad state, we're energetically putting up a no disturb sign and closing the doors astrally so that we can deal with our problem until we are pure enough, clear enough to be social again, to join a greater community and to be yeah, in a way civil instead of um, inflicting our lower energies upon them. Because astral beings live already in a higher world than we do. So trying to imagine things or to visualize if we are full of anger and disappointment and frustration to try to change things in a magical fashion is not a very wise action to take uh, because usually 
you will just be working with yourself and be working with your own frustrations and your own uh, dream images, but they're not being communicated outside of your own little astral corner. Um, if you're very unlucky, you will actually attract the attention of other powers who have very low vibrations, what we would call more demonical spirits or lower spirits or being from lower dimensions, who are very much in tune with anger, aggression, sadness, disappointment. And they will feel attracted to these energies which we are projecting into their world because they can feed off these energies and they can actually use this as a bridge to uh, join us, to come out of their own lower dimensions and to come into our dimension and often in a parasitical fashion. Um, so if we learn how to use our visualizations magically, it's not so good to do that if we're in a very bad state. Um, but magic, just like prayer, is something which works best if we're in a good state. Um, because then we can really get a good cooperation going between us and other sources of power. Um, if we do it out of a position of weakness, of need, of discontent, then we tend not to, yeah, in a way, focus upward, but rather focus downward. And ultimately, what you work with is what you mingle with. So if you mingle with higher powers, ultimately your own energy will also become higher, because intermingling of higher energy, which is being added to your own energy body, and the same is also true if you work with lower powers. So the counterintuitive thing is that if you work with lower powers and they give you all kinds of promises and assurances and they fulfill your dreams and desires and ultimately you get what you wish for or what you are trying to magically visualize, the end result isn't that you will be happier, more content, more at peace, more harmonious. But you will have what you want, but you will still feel unhappy, discontent, unsatisfied, angry, depressed. And this way you will go into a negative spiral. Because if they would, in a way, make you content, these lower powers, then you would stop being of use to them. You would not generate energy anymore which helps them to come into our world, which is nourishing and supportive to them. So they would be ruining <laughs> their own existence by fulfilling your wish in such a way that it would be satisfactory. And this is often the trap of um, working with the dark side of the cosmos or with black magic. Yes, it is very powerful. Yes, you will have results. And often the results of black magic are, at least on the physical level, much stronger than that of the, the lighter types of magic because our world is also of a heavier vibration than the astral world. So these darker powers of the lower vibrations have more access, more influence on the physical realm than the higher powers do. But even though things will manifest, the core problem of your will remaining in an unsatisfied state or in a disharmonious state will continue. So yes, visualization is, is yeah, a very good method to use if you use it at the appropriate times. And uh, I would also really advise visualization. Um, but it's important to really recognize what you're doing, to really distinguish when you're, in a way, remembering things, which is uh, a very low, um, level, you could say. You're just taking old things up again and bringing them to the fore. So the energy of uh, a memory is usually not a very high energy. If you start visualizing, then you're in a way starting to just um, use your willpower and you could say the, the visual building blocks you have available to um, to create something. But often what you create is rather static. 
and when it becomes imagination it becomes it starts living a life of its own and that is also when it becomes more accessible to other powers to uh, to join you in uh, this imagination so it also starts to have in a way a narrative while the visualization tends to be more static um, so I would say imagination is the best tool for working with astral powers and visualization is enough to have some magical effects but not enough to really cooperate with other astral powers.